Hey, uh, John. Uh, John Russell is with me today. Uh, this is Thomas Keegan again um, uh, with libertarianprogressive.com. Uh, and, um, and you can also go to youtube.com slash blast of fresh air to see these interviews for 2012. Uh, explaining, um, uh, basically we're interviewing independent third party candidates that are going to be on the ballot this November the 6th uh, election day. And um, a lot of people are saying nowadays, what can we do? Congress has like a, a single digit approval rating um, recently in the Gallup polls. You can look that up on Google, that's a fact. And uh, in the media, uh, pr pretty low too. So, you know, we need to get people in the debates and, and we need to have, uh, you, you know, a voice, a voice in the debates and a voice in Congress. I mean, people are talking about Occupy Wall Street and, and tea parties. Um, maybe, um, you know, we need to occupy the Congress, um, of course. And today we have John Russell. He's in the 12th district in Florida um, running for the U.S. House. Uh, John, you're, um, well, welcome, John, and, um, and and the last interview I did was on uh, July 4th, um, so it's been a little while, but today's August 24th, 2012, it's Friday night, around 9 p.m. John, how are you doing, and, and you're, you did, you, you, you made it past the primaries and everything, um, and, and you're on the ballots, and you're going to give people a real choice, and, um, and you are an independent, is that correct, sir? Pardon me? You're an in, in independence, right? I am, uh, I am registered with, as a no-party affiliation candidate. I emphasize that because I've been involved in the major two-party system uh, as a Democrat for the past uh, decade or so. And so I've, I've pretty much had my fill of watching what goes on uh, on both sides. And so that... Um, led me to uh, the very uh, the epiphany when I received my no party affiliation voter ID card. I never had such a, a sense of, um, uh, you know, a sense like a cleaning, like, like you feel feeling like, like a like positive a feeling <laughs> of doing that. And I had been a no party affiliation uh, registered uh, voter in Buffalo, New York, where I uh, where I hail from uh, uh, originally, I guess. Awesome. Yeah, and, a few people uh, from there. That's a great place. Yeah, Buffalo's a great place. Go Bills, go Sabres. Bills are going to be good this year, I think. <laughs> but, uh, the, the, uh, the bottom line is, uh, in Buffalo, uh, the Democrats uh, were the ones that were um, raking it in uh, in any way, manner, shape, or form there. So I was no party affiliation, as were a lot of my friends. And um, with an orientation, with a populist orientation, I, I, I never actually voted for uh, Bill Clinton. I voted for Ross Perot in 92, so you can see I've, I don't come to this, uh, you know, accidentally or, or whatnot. Yeah, a lot of people remember him. If, if you never heard of Ross Perot, I mean, he got 19% in a three-way race. Uh, between Bill Clinton and the first George Bush in 92 in the presidential elections. I mean, he uh, he was right, I mean, in a three-way race, 19% is pretty close, you know. That was, uh, yeah, he was definitely a force, and uh, uh, I was disappointed, uh, as were, I think, lots of people that he uh, dropped out, because he, he really uh, made, some, made some good points, and in that time, uh, in uh, the 92 race, I actually shook hands with Bill Clinton, and... Uh, and um, asked him a question, and uh, he struck me as uh, being slick. <laughs> but uh, uh, we're in uh, such terrible straits today, and uh, there is uh, the two-party system is is by hook and by crook uh, using every every uh, every uh, tool in the box. Uh, to keep this system locked into two parties, which are eminently uh, more controlled. Well, look at where we're at. I, John, I'm sorry to interrupt, but look at where we're at right now. I mean, um, it's the result of always voting the lesser two evils. Like, I mean, 
if people say just one more time I'll vote for a Republican or just one more time I'll vote for a Democrat because I don't want I'm scared of that other person who's going to be even worse I mean that's what we've been doing since it's like worse and worse since like the 80s and, and and the reason why we're in the problems that we're in now is because every four years people say the same thing it's always it's gotten worse each year I mean right now we're you, you know, I, I, you could even argue Obama was handed a, a horrible economy, but he passed the NDAA. I mean, he's on. I agree with you there, 100 percent. That is uh, that is something that I would seek to uh, seek to repeal. At least the uh, you know you can't repeal the funding aspects of it, but repeal uh, all the uh, the uh, infringements on our freedom. Yeah. And uh, one can argue uh, quite credibly that America Americans are somewhat less free now than they were four years ago. Actually, you're, you There's, know what? I just thought of a good catch line here. Remember when Reagan said, are you better off now than you were four years ago? Are we better off now than we were 12 years ago? Yeah, are we more free now than we were 12 years ago or four it, years ago? That, that's exactly it. And uh, let me let me say this. You know, I'm in health care. And... Um, the shenanigans that uh, are going on, um, really the, dim the diminishing of the power uh, of the middle class uh, and the, obviously the incomes, uh, a statistic just came out the other day that now the top, uh, I, I don't know what exactly the percentile was, I, I think I have the paper over there because it's, it's statistics were uh, were well put but uh, uh, the top echelon economically uh, has now totally uh, exceeded that of the, the what they call the entire middle class oh yeah I mean I think everyone knows that I, I'm sure you could Google that or, or Bing it or, or Yahoo it or whatever you want to do but I, I mean whatever search engine you use I don't want to always say Google but um, but that's that's true. I mean, it's like the top one percent of the one percent. I, I mean, um, that you know, probably own more than like thirty percent of our GDP or something like that, or 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 how much income everyone owns. I mean, the rich are definitely getting richer, and and the poor are getting poorer. I mean, it definitely is a make it or break it time. I, I don't know if we can afford another four years of Obama or Romney. I mean, it's like the Republicans always say, you know, well if. I would, you know, uh, vote for an independent or, or, or not vote for, for a Republican in, in, in like four more years, and the Democrats say the same thing, but they don't realize that if they keep on waiting, they're both going to get um, uh, the short end of the stick, um, and uh, basically they don't realize, like, it's okay, so Obama's passing these things like the NDAA, but we know he's never going to use them. The thing that people need to understand is any precedents or rules or laws he passes now can be used in the future generations um, by someone else who might not be um, as uh, might not hold the fire. But uh, uh, I, I think the uh, the the salient point here is how do we get this situation here? It's the policies made by the policymakers that are owned by the corporations. Obama's owned by the corporations, obviously Romney is as well, uh, and one has to recognize that the Congress writes the laws. And uh, here I am running for, running for Congress, um, and it's all about the money. 98% of the time the guy who has, or gal, who has the most money wins. And uh, that shouldn't be how our system operates. It wasn't designed like that in the first place. Of course, there are some issues that one can contend with about the design in the first place that was really meant to preserve the power of the upper echelon way back, you know, at the beginning of this country. But the, we, we have to awaken the people, and I think the Internet, uh, more so than ever before, is the avenue by which we can awaken the people. Now, I may be wrong, uh, but I really feel uh, things that I was saying four years ago, uh, people I hear ordinarily. I hear people talking about the money. I actually, by the way, I, I don't want to let this get by. I am in 
endorsed personally, personally endorsed by David Cobb, who is, uh, he was the 2004 Green Party uh, nominee for president, who together with Michael Bednarik, the Libertarian Party nominee for president in 2004, uh, they contested the Ohio uh, election, uh, the Ohio presidential vote uh, together. Uh, because, you know, obviously there was a lot of shenanigans that even came out later. Uh, and, of course, uh, Mr. Cobb uh, is uh, also um, the national spokesperson for Move to Amend to get rid of Citizens United. Well, the money in politics yeah. is really, that, that is the cancer that is uh, driving uh, the country for most Americans uh, in the wrong direction. And uh, so I have, I have some policies that... Uh, yeah, actually, wait, tell us what, what would be some proposals. What would you, like when you went to Congress, what would you try to uh, introduce um, and, and build coalitions to? Uh, what about election laws? Because, you know, that might, we'll start off with that as a set of policies and issues because that's really to the heart of the matter. And, um, and if, you know, I know a lot of people feel nervous about these electronic voting machines uh, that have been tested I've over. Had, uh, and I've had experience with that. Yeah. We, uh, uh, together with Mark Adams as my attorney in 2006, we contested my election results, even though I lost 60-40, which is typical. Uh, it's kind of funny. You know, statistically... Well, what uh, was that? What was that in Florida? Um, in Florida, I was running against the Republican District 5 uh, Congresswoman Ginny Brown Waite. I, I won two uh, primary elections uh, in the Democratic Party in 06 and 08. Okay. And um, uh, in 2006, uh, we went around uh, and with a very well-constructed affidavit and asked people who they voted for for in a, a very, we'll say, a very conservative precinct with Lime Rock Roads and barbed wire and American flags all over the place and everything else. So not really a, a you know, a point where you'd figure it's a whole bunch of Democrats. Yeah, like, like, like with the stickers on the windows that exactly. say uh, security so by Smith and West. And, uh, yeah. and, and uh, with a very well-constructed affidavit with over 90% participation in the... Uh, you know, in the uh, going around to the voters in that precinct, got a um, found a 14 percent flip of votes from John Russell to Ginny Brown Waite, and uh, so uh, I actually got some mention in uh, Mark Crispin Miller's book. Uh, well, I mean, look at this year in the Republican National Convention. I mean, it's obviously Mitt Romney is a corporate the primary, candidate. The primary I mean, was uh, obviously Romney. in the primary, which is adds more fuel to this problem with the elections. Uh, you know, when you looked at the Republican primary, there were shenanigans from day one. And no matter what the operation was, whether it was electronic voting machines or paper or whatnot, the cheating, it was rife with cheating. And uh, I am for, uh, because of my experiences, for a return to hand counting of paper ballots. Great. At great. the precinct level, this is fundamental, as you, you mentioned earlier, hand counting of paper ballots at the precinct level and no trans, no electronic transmission other than a fax machine, uh, and and the official results are hand carried to the, uh, you know, and posted at the precinct. There's numerous checks and balances. The most important check: the more people that are involved in the counting. Remember what Stalin said: it's not who votes, it's he who counts the votes. Yeah, absolutely. The more people involved, that is your check. When you have more people involved in the actual counting of the votes, they come to agreement, it doesn't get any more democratic than that. All right, now I agree, totally agree with you on that. I, I don't think anyone would disagree, um, at, at least, and that, that would be a good proposal, I mean, to uh, have hand I have an extensive, uh, you know, discussion on my, webs on my, uh, on my website on, uh, you know, election reform. I'm still working on the finance reform, but one can guess if I'm for... Yeah, you now, know. What about? Um, yeah, here's another thing about accountability, and this can go into voting in numerous areas. Um, nowadays, it seems like more and more the government has its cameras on us, but we, the people who are supposed to have the government work for us, we hire them, vote for them, etc., have the cameras actually on us more instead of our cameras on them. Um, I think this might be a big issue in the like the decade coming up. 
because um, there have been a lot of incidences uh, around the country where um, judges have stated that people do have the right to, to publicly video camera public servants while they're in public. I'm not talking about while they're behind their own house or anything like that, but I mean like... We're talking policemen. We've had all kinds of incidents that have been fairly well published by... Policemen, but, but the thing is, the judge like will uh, you, you know, let this person go, but the fact is, before that even happens, this person has to spend a couple days in jail or something, or get falsely arrested, and then the cops never get in trouble, the ones that told them that they weren't allowed to record and then put them in jail, even though the person is told by the judge that um, it wasn't any violation. And then other places, it, it, it's kind of going back and forth. And, and that could go to like when people are counting votes, what about people being able to go into the voting um, precincts and record them voting? I mean, what, what's your stance? Like, shouldn't people on, in public areas bring their, you know, do you think there should be some laws that protects people's rights to you, you know, video camera? Uh, I think there may be a little bit, uh, uh, you know, um, I don't know about that. I haven't got it, gotten into that about as far as I think videotaping the operation, like the process, but actually videotaping people voting, I think is, and I think that's occurred. And you know, news people have, you know, well, done yeah, I don't mean them voting in but that, you know, like counting the votes at the end. Yeah, yeah, and there's, you know, I, I, I of course have some friends of mine that have been involved in a, a lot of this sort of thing and uh, yeah they try and uh, the officials we'll say certain officials really try and hide uh, uh, as much as possible um, uh, you know the the public view from what it is and how they're doing it now when we did recount when we did uh, um, went back and looked at ballots um, we videotaped um, all that uh, activity uh, videotaping well why, why wouldn't someone be able to, I mean, could you imagine some things like, I mean, I'm not talking about like national security things or things like that, but that's a thing that a lot of people claim, which isn't transparency. true. Transparency, I mean, uh, I, I'm all for as much transparency as possible. And, uh, you know, when it comes to the vote, and there's way more to this than just the counting of the votes. There's all kinds of discriminatory activities that occur before the votes, push polls, I'm for outlawing push polls that, uh, you know, this, this uh, purposeful propaganda uh, where, uh, you know, and the, and the news media, remember we have a corporate media whose goal it is is to keep, maintain the status quo. Everything is about maintaining the status quo, not disrupting who, who is at the reins of power. Yeah, do you think the media, like certain media that are like on the public airwaves actually, they're, they're granted a, uh, you know, license to be on the public airwaves, um, do you think they should have to give like a, uh, you know, um, a specific amount of time, like equal time uh, under certain... Well, under my, uh, you know, what I uh, described there, I am for, uh, we need to really take the money out of, out, of, uh, out of politics. Then with that, you would get rid of the graft. And, uh, and you have, uh, get rid of these TV commercials and so on, uh, every but public campaign financing, in such that uh, everybody gets, uh, you know, we're talking about efficiency here. So if everybody gets the same pot of money, uh, and uh, it's all about who is the most efficient and resourceful in using the resources they have. Unlimited volunteers, um, unlimited no numbers of volunteers, um, public, you get rid of these commercials, then you have real debates that everyone that's in the race has to attend. Right now, uh, what we're gonna, what we're gonna see, I'm quite sure, are incumbents who will not debate their challengers. Uh, I even, so far, uh, I do, I'm gonna have an editorial board interview with the Tampa Tribune. However, Tampa, Tampa Times, is the, uh, what was the St. Pete Times, uh, they're saying it's been our policy not to interview NPA candidates. And I say, well, you know, uh, now you're gonna you're gonna interview the Democrat who is a 25 year old guy who works at Walgreens as a certified photo development specialist, but you're not going to you're not going to interview a guy with you know my credentials. Uh, I take care of uh, you know I manage the care of cancer patients and uh, have a deep understanding of the problems uh, that are inherent in our healthcare system and actually have plans to. Uh, save our healthcare system for 
the masses, not just the... Now, actually, that's a big issue. Let's hear your health care uh, plans, actually. Um, that's another well, um, my, uh, uh, as I said, I just had put this video out. Uh, John Russell refutes uh, Paul Ryan's uh, plan uh, for Medicare reform, which is really to uh, really destroy it, the privatization of Medicare. They want to really turn the whole thing into a, uh, you know, when you take, talk about taking public money and, uh, you know, funding private business with public... Well, isn't that uh, corporate welfare? Uh, you know, that's how we might look at it, but that's not how the... Because, I mean, here's a reason why it's corporate welfare, because, I mean, you could say, well, we, you know, they can bid for it, but the thing is, you could hire me and give me that much money to, to, to be a, you know, and I could easily just hire all the right people and to be able to do the exact same job that any other company could. So you're basically giving our tax dollars to these big uh, insurance conglomerates, and, and they're going to use a percentage of that money just you know, one to has um, to lobby Congress again to give them more contracts. Yeah, one has to look. Ending. One has to look at how do insurance health insurance companies make money. Number one, by denying coverage to those they perceive to be a risk. I have been one of those in the past, and I am, have genes that take me to 100 years old. I don't smoke. You know, uh, but I've been denied health care, uh, health care coverage, and uh, or by denying or delaying payment uh, for services rendered by a, a health care provider. And the other way is by denying uh, authorization for what should be covered uh, services that a patient needs. You know what's real funny? In, in the last couple of years of the Reagan administration, Sony might least expect this, he was going to propose a, uh, a public option, actually, and, um, and guess who took it down? Um, the AARP. Was the AARP? Yeah, it was. And, and that, it, when that, isn't that kind of weird? I mean, he was actually, there, there is really a movement in Congress, and they were really going to do it. They're going to pass a public option, um, which would... Uh, you know, just be a public option, basically, and um, and the double ARP um, lobbied pretty hard against it and pretty much destroyed it. So. Right. Well, because they were, you know, well, they are big in the insurance business. Uh, some people don't really get that, but that is the truth. Um, but the post office couldn't, like, you could make it. I, I think kind of like you could make a public option, just like the post office, which is totally self-sufficient. Um, doesn't take any taxpayer dollars. It's totally paid for by postage, by stamps, and stuff like that. It's not insolvent. The only reason. Well, this is. Let me, let me just describe my plan because I. I, I what what uh, my plan would be is okay. We got this Affordable Care Act, which is somewhat of an Orwellian term, mm -hmm. a la the Bush policies of clear skies and healthy forests. It's a total like Orwellian term. Child left yes. behind. It's or Orwellian, you know. I uh, wish he was around to see this because he would laugh himself back into the grave oh, and yeah. stuff. But uh, so what my plan would be, okay, well, we don't need to tear this thing down. All we need to do is balance it out by adding uh, an option for, for the public of any age to buy into Medicare. Yeah. And uh, you pay, in my plan, People would pay according to their ability to pay with a maximum cap such that, uh, you know, a billionaire would not pay any more than your average millionaire. Uh, so it would be capped out and, uh, and everyone would have access to quality, affordable, comprehensive health care. And that's the difference. The basic, uh, this thing, ta discussion about basic health care is ridiculous because having worked in emergency rooms, I know people walk into the emergency room looking at basic and in seconds they can be into comprehensive if you know what i mean uh it used to cost 3500 bucks just to start up the aeromed helicopter at tampa general just to start it up you're in you can be into six figures in a you know into a trauma alert uh you know when you get the get the flight with the helicopter and the whole shoot and match go to you can be into big big money uh, very quickly. That's comprehensive health care. So my plan would take care of, I would get rid of Medicaid because I would roll, which would give us... I think us, that's the number one um, reason for bankruptcies is um, people's hospitals. Well, 50% of the people that file bankruptcy, uh, they have, um, you know, health insurance. 
<laughs> you know, yeah, even with health problem. insurance, even with it, I mean, it's still with health insurance, it's fifty percent of the people that file for bankruptcy have health insurance, and, or you know, it's be, uh, because of uh, you know health care bankruptcy, basically. Yeah, so we could get rid of bankruptcy, and 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 so like you're talking about a public option where anyone, any age, can buy into Medicare. Exactly, and this would their include. Their deductible would be um, based on their income, right? Right, and and you know, you, they talk about Paul Ryan, especially in his little videos, talks about. Um, that uh, Medicare is going bankrupt and such and such, and he plays with the numbers, you know, plays around with, uh, you know, like forgets all about time value of money, mixing and matching current numbers with, you know, 40-year-old numbers and everything else. We have fun with him in this video that I did. My videos are available on YouTube at John Russell 2012 on YouTube. But um, the, the point is, um, you know, people, uh, people would have access I mean, imagine no more bankruptcies um, for, uh, we would probably get rid of, what, half the bankruptcies in this country? Uh, well, you know, uh, that's, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that, uh, that in particular. But I like to throw in different ways to look at it because, I mean, that might be an appeal to, like, a constituency you might not expect. I mean, that, that would be good for banks. Well, people, the fear of bankruptcy would allow people more latitude in making their life choices. Totally. Yeah. Now, the other, the other point is, that, you know, like I said, Ryan talks about uh, Medicare is going to fail and that's why we have to privatize it, so we got to decimate it to, to save it. The deal is when you have healthy people, younger people like us buying into Medicare, what, that use very little in the way of health care, unlike the skewed nature of the, the 65 and older population that uses proportionately much more health care than people, say, in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, uh, this would, the fiscal status of Medicare would be instantly uh, taken care of. And we wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. Now, Business would yeah. benefit tremendously. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's another good point. Uh, yeah, because yeah. When, in my plan, I would give, uh, okay, so business could actually, so say you got a, a guy who sweeps floors, he makes a certain salary, so his premium would be relative to his W-2 take-home pay, W-2 pay earnings. And then you got an engineer, and he's got certain W-2 earnings because he's an engineer, so on and so forth. And the, the premiums paid for both those guys would be different. Now, the employer, because of their, their earnings, but the deal would be the, the employer could pay those premiums as a benefit, which would be much more cost-effective, probably in the neighborhood of 35 to 40 percent more or less expensive than uh, buying private insurance because that's the differential in efficiency between Medicare and, and private insurance uh, offerings, you know, operations. Yeah, because if you have a public option like Medicare, if you made it into a public option, that is, um, then they wouldn't have to pay big CEO salaries or advertising costs. Um, and, and, and but they would force the private insurers, if they want to stay in the business, to be more competitive, to well, get see, rid of the fat. that's why I was um, com comparing it to the post office, because, I mean, there's still a UPS and a FedEx. It doesn't put them out of business. No, they're not out of business. They may, they may alter their, uh, you know, their offerings product-wise, but, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the point here being we, we're either going to take care of our people, uh, make sure that Americans are taken care of, because just because you're not a millionaire doesn't mean you shouldn't have, you know, more than adequate health care. Yes, I, I agree with you. This, and, and now, keep in mind, like, my website's called libertarianprogressive.org, so I'm trying yeah. to find commonalities between those two types of groups. I there are, totally. You. I mean, you know, it's a choice. I'm not mandating anybody going to right, right, so that's another question. You're wouldn't you? you know, I mean, it's, it, it would be the smart business decision. The, the point of being here, this would be a boon to business because this is the biggest, um, uh, this is the biggest uh, ball and chain that American yeah. business has on its shoulders is the cost of health care. And, and the cost of health care, the major cost of health care, there is some shenanigans which I can go into uh, with reference to some providers, uh, more like chain providers and so on, but uh, of, of health care that I can talk about. I mean, companies in Europe, um, like, 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 like VW or, 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 or whoever, um, they don't have to pay for health insurance for their employees. Companies in Japan, they don't have to pay for health insurance for their employees. People in, in, in the United States, um, 
they, 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 well, I guess they don't have to, but they do. Well, they're going to have to start doing it. But, I mean, this would give our businesses and corporations, um, like, like, that's for, that's for boon to boon to business. It would be like a tax cut. Now, on the other hand, I, I know people and are. Plus, uh, they would have a healthier um, uh, workforce, too. Totally. I mean, the, the, a healthier workforce. Now, let me just say, if we go along the path that we are currently on and, and, and American voters uh, allow the system to go in the direction it's going, let me just explain what is happening behind closed doors, a bipartisan effort in Washington. We have too many people between automation and offshoring, and I have a plan to diminish this offshoring problem, too, that I've come up with which uh, I'd like to t discuss uh, briefly as well. Yeah, no, that's why we discuss everything that you want. Now, I'm just going to pause it here for just a second and just continue sure. it right after that. We're at the halfway mark here, or the half an hour mark. All right, now, now we're back. It's just a precaution I take in case, you, you know, I, it, part of the recording. We're amortizing your risk here. Or something. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. we're, we're yeah, back. Was... We're talking about, now, there was something else I, I wanted to um, uh, just, um, re uh, just re follow up on the health care. Um, uh, it's now. Now here's here. I think is dividing line between a lot of. Now I think there's more commonalities than there are dividing lines, and there's more priorities that are commonalities between the so-called left, right, and and the middle. Oh, there absolutely are um, more. But, uh, oh, libertarians and progressives are very closely aligned. Oh, yeah, especially nowadays with, with like big issues like the NDA, war and peace, and big corporate uh, cronyism. But let me just uh, try, try to give another angle where you could explain the health care, I think, um, which we, it, it, because I, I tend to be libertarian on a lot of things. Uh, now, health care, I agree with you, John. I think a public option would be a great option. And now, here's the reasoning. Um, like, I don't think the government should get into selling, like, tennis shoes or, or anything else. I mean, Absolutely not, th yeah. Th there are things, I totally, you know, lo love the free market. I think it definitely is, is the way to go. Um, you know, Adam Smith and everything like that. But um, supply, demand, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, you know, you see prices. The problem is the market price. really isn't very free. It's all been greased for the people at the top. Totally, totally. It's not a free market. It's, it's, all it, it's just not free. But, but the, here's a test of, of things I think that, that uh, might be beneficial to have a public option. And it doesn't mean it has to be the only option. It, it's not, not number one, um, you, you know, if, if, if it's something that has to do with our, our, what we call the commons, um, like money, like national defense, the judicial system, um, our police, um, things like that. Um, that, that structure, that, highways, you know, I mean, these kind of yeah, things. Yeah, stuff that could have a civil liberty. just doesn't do it very well. That's, that's why we, there is a reason now why. There, here's a, a second thing, something that pays for itself. Like, if you had something like this, it, it could literally pay for itself. We spend 20% of our entire GDP on this. So I, I think a, oh. another good test is something that can pay for itself and is voluntary. If you mix those two things into the equation, it pays for itself, and, and it might even have some benefits beyond paying for itself, and it's voluntary, then I don't see how any libertarian could complain about it. I mean, if it pays for itself and it's voluntary... Well, I mean, this certainly, the, like I said, the... That's the principal point, though, you might need to make to some libertarians. I yeah, mean, the Medicare itself, just real quick numbers, Medicare, 95 cents of every dollar and that's a conservative number, go to the bedside. That's how efficient Medicare actually is, okay? When we talk about private health insurance, at best, 65 cents of every dollar goes to the bedside. Right, so which is more- They out of business. I mean, AIG, we bail them out, so that's- Exactly, so exactly. So the, the point is, health is important uh, to a thriving economy, and uh, and it and and you're making it voluntary. I mean, if someone's like an Amish person and they don't want any part of this, are you going to force them to like? Have no, nobody's to forcing them. It's an option. You know, they got this uh, the um, the um, health care uh, exchange. This would just be one more choice in the exchange. So you look at these things. Let me sit and make this point uh, that I think strengthens this argument even more. I work in health care. I deal with insurance companies and Medicare. Uh, you know, I, I'm with patients. And the, the fact of the matter is, there are no bureaucrats in Medicare that tell you, tell the doctor or myself who write orders, you know, for CAT scans, MRIs, medications, whatever, 
no one in Medicare, no bureaucrat is there, you know, that we have to go through first to get approval. But all the time, we're talking about, in fact, I was just on the phone with uh, a representative for a healthcare company uh, earlier in the week for a PET scan for a person who has cancer. Now, I got it approved, but the fact of the matter is I had to talk to somebody, or my boss has to talk to somebody, or the other doctors have to talk to somebody. They don't always approve it, or you gotta go through these hoops, or there's huge delays, and when you have a serious illness, the delays often, you know, Right. I've seen, I'm not going to say often, but the delays do sometimes cost people quality and quantity of life and cost lives. Now, now there are other issues. That's totally true, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it's because they're unsure. I mean, sometimes, you, you know, we pass laws where the, the benefits go to the insurance companies and then they, they be, they're being the chancy on the cost. Uh, the capitated yeah. business where the, the physicians uh, have a... Uh, uh, an incentive to not uh, deliver health care so they get $15,000 a patient and exactly. if you need a consult uh, or something they don't do the consult you see yeah. there's all those bad incentives I, yeah, I mean, just, it's like quotas and and, and then if, if 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 you gave now you you want to make sure that the doctors also you, you know we have a problem with like you know what is it like five dollars for one aspirin or something like that uh, well what you, what you have is you know, so so the one incentive is that the doctors have uh, have a disincentive to uh, bring in specialists that might be better uh, able to take care of a patient's particular problem, or uh, so they try and do everything in house. Like you have primary care physicians doing echocardiograms, you know, instead of the cardiologists. And let me tell you, it's pretty complex reading echocardiograms and <laughs> stuff. It's it's all physics, okay? Um, but um, uh, on the other side, yeah. And some of that is just, it's just cost allocation. What is the total cost when you sit there and you put somebody in an ICU and it's 3,000 bucks a day? It's how's the co how are the costs allocated? Well, you got labor, you got fixed costs, you got all these variables. That's how you come up with a number for a, an aspirin for 75 bucks or something. It, it doesn't make sense on the face of it, but when it comes to a cost accounting, that's how it gets accounted for all the all the costs that are underneath you know the the aspirin not just right, aspirin. Right. that's just accounting that's being you know propagandized a little bit but the fact of the matter is if we if we put preventative care uh, available what gives people longer and healthier lives better quality of life longer life it's all the surveillance activities the colonoscopies at age 50 I can tell you about a guy that died because he didn't get a get a colonoscopy at 40 because he had strong family history for colon cancer and uh, he couldn't afford it because he had, well, we're waiting for better insurance. By the time he shows up the emergency room, he's full of cancer, died eight months later. Well, isn't stress another thing? I mean, and just stress about having insurance. Well, certainly. I mean, I, th there's all kinds of issues. Let me just summarize this real quick uh, where I think they're going. Remember I said that America has too many people with automation and offshoring. Now I have a plan to deal with offshoring that some labor people really think uh, it can be very effective. But what, what we're talking about is, you know what an actuarial table is? Actuarial table is what the insurance companies use to determine how long people live on average and so on and so forth. So when, when you say, okay, we take the Simpson-Bowles plan, diminish Social Security to irrelevance, in light of no pensions anymore and Wall Street that's totally corrupt and of course who's been arrested there you know and charged uh, and then uh, we take away um, access to health care uh, you know diminishing Medicare to a voucher plan for basic health care uh, what's going to happen the end result quite clearly indisputably is going to be that working people are going to live shorter lives simple as that yeah we should be I, I mean the trend should be going up in that I mean that that's that that's actually a measurement I mean talking about actualities I mean that should be the actuality well it has gone up but it's going to go down because yeah, we it's you know downturn are expendable yeah. and and so we need somebody uh, you know I'm doing this as much for me as I am for you or anybody else yeah, it's an we need a voice a somebody that understands this and is, and is willing to talk about it publicly 
and I'm willing to do that. Now, here's another way that would make it cheaper too: is if, like, they can bulk buy, like, like when we, they pass. Absolutely, for the for that Medicare Part D, which was a yeah. scam to deplete Medicare of resources, again for the pharmaceutical companies, right. and this uh, uh, Affordable Care Act is a gift to the health insurance companies. Mm -hmm. well, that's why all their stocks shoot it up. That's exactly, of course, because they're going to get all these new publicly funded. Uh, 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 patient. And, and you know what? I bet some of peop people in Congress were doing some good insider trading on that, too. You betcha. You, be you betcha. And the law that they just passed is uh, pretty loosey-goosey, too. So the, w what we're talking about is a crisis of integrity in Washington at every level. I mean, level. even Dennis Kucinich voted for it, and he said he regretted doing that. Because yeah, exactly. And, and I know Dennis, and... Uh, in fact, uh, you know, just one quick point on uh, the election reform document that's on my website now, kind of new improved version. He voted against the Holt, uh, the Holt bill, which was for this election re federal election reform, because of the points that I made in that document on my website. He yeah, told no, me that. That's someone point. with integrity. So you know him. I mean, now when I think of people in Congress that have some integrity. And whether you agree with their issues or not, you can respect them. I mean, Ron Paul, you might not agree with all his issues. You might agree with all of them. But even people but he on does, the left, yeah. I always hear them saying they, they respect him and, um, you, you know, they, 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 they like him. And, 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 and so I think of him. I think of Dennis Kucinich. I think of maybe Russ Feingold. I think of uh, other people, Bernie Sanders. I think of um, that guy in North Carolina who is kind of friends with Ron Paul. I forgot his name. But um, – so, I mean, is that kind of like, um, like when, you know, what kind of personality do you think you'd be in Congress, um, you, you know? Or, Wait, well, I would have a, a very... Do you um, care if you get reelected? I mean, I know you care, but are you going to like... No, 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 I'm not going to, there's no pandering here. If I get there, there is not going to be one ounce of pander. I will go outside the box to make points. No one is going to shut me up. No party is going to shut me up. I am going to be a voice for the people. And I'm not doing this. For a hobby, I'm not doing it. You know, I'm doing this to accomplish something for people like myself. And uh, uh, it, these things, this shenanigans, needs to be exposed. And uh, if I have to set up a PA on the steps of the House of Representatives outside, that's what I'll do. Nobody's going to shut me down with some BS protocol. Uh, because the people, if in the event I'm elected. And there, there are significant barriers to my getting elected, as I uh, alluded to uh, earlier, the messing with the ballot in this race. Gus Bill, Arrakis, uh, Gus Bill Arrakis is a very, very, very weak incumbent. Well, you know what? He also, I looked up, um, voted for the NDAA. And, that, and actually, I was, I, was, yeah, yeah, I, I was researching some of your opponents here. That's all I needed to see. That's all I needed to see right there. Um, there's only two people actually in Florida that voted against it. One was um, that guy who's running for senator. I forgot his name. Um, but um, he's, he's the uh, Republican candidate for Senate. Um, uh, what's his name? But, um, and then um, Alcee Hastings. And um, so it was a one Republican, one Democrat that voted against it. And um, like the NDA, the National Defense Reauthorization Act of 2012, which was passed um, like like New Year's Eve, uh, yeah. it, it basically allows, here's some of the things that it allowed, um, it, it allowed indefinite detention, it allowed it allows the military to, to conduct uh, criminal investigations in the U.S., um, not the FBI, I mean, we, you know, we have the FBI, and the FBI for that, actually, um, not the CIA. And I mean, we're, yeah, it, it is really scary. I mean, I've, I, I've read it, actually, Chris Hedges has a lawsuit going Yes. to over right. that, and it's in the hands of the judge right now, I think. There was a whole huge article in the paper the other day, which I'm going to uh, look at. I love Chris Hedges. I mean, this guy speaks the truth uh, really well. Yeah, Glenn Greenwald wrote an excellent article. If you don't know about the NDAA, look up, just type into Google, NDAA Glenn Greenwald. And yeah. He, he wrote an excellent article. He breaks it down. The ACLU wrote an article about it, too. I mean, it, it, it's, it's really Stalin-esque. I mean, that's the best way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Um, the, that, is, that sort of thing is huge. The Patriot Act, obviously we've got to, you know, these people are concerned about the budget. Nobody ever mentions the business going on over in Iraq and Afghanistan. We're yeah. the four trillion dollars into that. Yeah. What do we have to show for it? Nothing. We're there for we're there for oil, Israel, and minerals in Afghanistan. 
and that's what we're there for. Yeah, and isn't that corporate welfare too? If we're there for oil, if that's actual actual reason. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, I mean it's. Uh, what about I, competition in the marketplace? I mean, if you're really libertarian, like if oil's going to be expensive, if we don't back it up with our military, let it be expensive, and maybe that will force new technology. This is a, it's like an solar. added cost onto the cost. Of, what it is, it's it's not like well, Iraq is not going to sell us. All, you know, I mean, geez. What we're doing, this is again protecting ExxonMobil, Shell Oil, BP, because we've got to ensure that our people, our companies, are the middlemen in this and making the profit, not some Iraqi oil concern or whatnot, not even partnering. I mean, what about the private contracts? I mean, we have more contractors in Iraq now than we do exactly. troops. Exactly. I mean, troops have to work next to people that are getting paid like 10 times their salary. Exactly. A friend of mine was over there driving trucks in Iraq for a year, driving driving trucks over there. And uh, he has a lot of stories to talk about. You know, how they take brand new stuff. Like he said, they had a whole, like, truckload of brand new headphones, you know, like you would use for communications or whatever, and they burn it. Uh, and they then they had all these, like, little private concerns popping up all over the place. You know, like, people would just start a company, uh, like, right over there on the, on, the, on the base or something, and they would, that would give them an avenue to siphon money uh, out of the government. I mean, this is the kind of crap that was going on. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we would be able to trade with these companies, and we would, I mean, these countries like Iran and Iraq, and we would probably, I mean, the amount of money we spent militarily to, to, so that we could preserve that oil, they would still have to compete with South America and Russia. I mean, the, I don't think exactly. the oil, oil would spike. We'd probably, we'd save all that money, save all those lives, um, have better um, uh, relations. We'd probably make more money. We'd probably be more profitable. And, and, and I mean, those countries. I mean, they they lo they used to love America. I mean, I mean, if, if if you know, you probably snuck into one of their houses or something. They they have like, you know, Madonna cassette albums. And Iran actually, and, Iran is a friend of mine is from Iran, and I've met his mother. She comes over here and visits, and his brother and stuff. Most and, of them are pro-American. I mean, exactly. Now let me let me point out a couple. But I have a, a plan of you know when we're talking about. Um, the business with the offshoring, because really creating jobs is, is, is really an important, uh, an important area of concern. And uh, what, what I've come up with is called the, uh, let me just look at it real quick, it's the name of it is semi, the Variable Labor Cost Tariff on Imported Goods. Okay? So the, the uh, way this thing would work so you got some company over in China using labor at 50 cents an hour or something, and the, the comparable cost for the same labor over here is $10 an hour. Well, you take a factor, uh, a calculated factor of the differential between that 50 cents an hour and the 10 bucks an hour or 20 bucks an hour, whatever it is, and that would be the tariff. So it would be variable based. Right, or you could just make it at least the minimum wage, you know. Say well, like you know, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I'm, I, this is a proposal, you know, but if people like it. It would bottom out, say, say you know, just to, for comparison's sake, you're buying a car from Germany. The labor cost is higher in Germany. That bottoms out at zero. When they come to zero when they, when, uh, and, and the labor cost in the foreign country uh, goes beyond the labor costs from the American worker, it bottoms out at zero, no tariff. So no tariff whatsoever. Tariff whatsoever. I think it's, uh, I think it's a, very, uh, uh, a very good plan that is, has been missing in our, uh, in our, in our uh, trade um, you know, policy, and uh, it would solve a lot of problems, and it would also, because they're going to pay that tariff anyway. Don't, don't, now, don't you think some companies would, they would find some way to weasel out of it. What they would do is just, they would disregard their citizenship and just become a Chinese company. Oh, it's all about the importing. It doesn't matter if they want to oh, okay. be. Okay, it's all about the importing. I the see importing. It's the importation. And so what, what we'd have here is, this would be good for workers worldwide because what would be the ownership? You're going to pay this differential tariff anyway, okay? So. Well, I think like now, I think that's a you know a good thing to propose. That's definitely a good thing to start a debate. I think one of the things amendments that someone would bring up would be like, 
just making it the minimum wage would make it a lot easier for paperwork and stuff, and then there wouldn't be a lot of like. Yeah, that that might that might be. I mean, I'm I'm open to, but I'm I'm presenting the discussion. Uh, and uh, well, we are seem like we're. I mean, we're giving bailouts to companies that's like GM that set up shops in um, like China to make um, those uh, cars and stuff. And while exactly. they're closing oh. shops in uh, Wisconsin and tax credit to close a plant here, tax credit. American tax dollars to open a plant overseas. So the, does that benefit the American economy? Yeah, that, I, I mean, honestly, I, I might not totally agree, but you know what? That doesn't that doesn't dissuade me from one single iota. I, it, you know what? I, I I'm sick of people that harp on like one thing they could like get to someone and say, you know, now I'm not going to support him. I mean, you're like by far ten times better, especially what you're saying about the NDA and the civil rights and and, and just I think the health care. You're, you're right on there too. And, and this, I think, you know what? I would, if it's, to me, if, if it passed, I mean, that that's better than, like, ripping ourselves off, right? <laughs> right. I mean, and look, we don't get any benefit from, uh, look, I'm sitting here, we got uh, silk shirts. This is a good example. You go into, into a, well, I won't name the store, but you got silk shirts, you know, like Hawaiian shirts for 100 bucks a piece, 75, 100 bucks a piece. Well, what is the total cost involved in those shirts? They put them in a box, probably 200 of them packed into a box. What's the shipping? It's ridiculous. And wh how is it that we're benefiting from shirts made in China or Vietnam for, say, the total cost involved is 10 bucks, and they're charging retail 75, 100 bucks for these things? I mean, it's it's something you'd have to consider. Like, how are we? without going down to their levels, going to compete with that. I mean, now you have to really think, I mean, I've really thought hard about that, and, and I, I, that's something that stumped me. Um, it, it's like if, if you can keep on competing with someone that's willing to work for nothing, I mean, how, but how are you going to, like, dig yourself out of that hole? I mean, I, I just can't picture it without some kind of, like, you, you know, s something like that, like what you're talking about. So. Exactly. So I just came up with that while I was writing a progress note at work. I go, oh, my God, that's a brilliant idea. I mean, just uh, uh, and, and, you know, just let me make a couple of go points ahead. here because I, I, we've got a lot of time in here. Uh, I would be for, uh, and a lot of people, Wall Street people are, in fact, the former CEO of Citibank was for, uh, reinstating Glass-Steagall by repealing the uh, um, uh, what the what is the uh, name of the act? It's the, the one uh, that Barney Frank and Chris Dodd. Uh, it, no, 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 not the Dodd Frank thing. We're, we would uh, repeal the uh, oh, Graham, uh, Graham Leach Bliley Act. Repeal that. That would reinstate right. Glass-Steagall automatically. Yes. Separating. Uh, commercial and investment banking and insurance. We need to do that. What about Alan Grayson and Ron Paul wanting to audit the Fed? Would you support I have no this? problem with that. Yeah, we got to do that. Look, they, it was like $16 trillion they coughed up. I mean, banking is the best deal in the world as far as business goes. You get free money practically, and then you lend it out, uh, you know, at oh, whatever. It totally is. Like, why can't I have a bank? Because it's, I assure why you Why can't you have a bank? Why I could, can't I have a bank? I, I could do it. better than going bankrupt. Yeah, exactly. So, so right there, uh, also repeal the Commodities Futures Modernization Act, which gave you the credit default swaps and all that. And I would go after guys like, I, I would seek, I think as a congressman, I can call uh, committees. As a congressman, I don't have to be anything else. As a congressman, I can call, call a committee for, you know, we, we want to call a committee for, uh, uh, get these, these guys like Paulson. All these guys are from Goldman Sachs. Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean got to, it, we have got to hold these... Attorney Paulson, he was about the guiltiest-looking person I've ever seen. Exactly. I mean, and all these guys get away with it because they're connected. But if you if you were to walk out of 7-Eleven with a six-pack, you're going to jail. These guys, and it, it, we got to get out of this, this situation where these guys pull some nonsense. They get a, they get a, some kind of a, a deal where... Oh, we don't have to admit any guilt. We're just going to pay a fine. It's just the cost of doing business. That's ridiculous. Nobody here gets away with, uh, you know, stealing a car. Look at the the illegal home foreclosure. Well, I mean, if you think about what they actually did, they're ki they're, they're 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 murderers. I mean, because in their direct now, I guess that's kind of silly to say, but but they're in their results of bringing this economy down because of all the speculation and derivatives. Um, I mean, it caused people to people die. People die from these actions. They die. They die disparately. They die one by one. Collectively, many people die. It's the same thing with the health care. 
Yes. People die every day. Same thing with our wars. The same thing. Look who's going. You know, I sit there, why in Romney's sons? What was Romney's response uh, when they said, why aren't your sons joining the military? Well, they got to do something more important. they got to help me get elected president. Yeah, I mean, if that doesn't, if, if people really want, I mean, I think Congress is where we can realistically um, you can execute a difference. big power, big difference if you put the right people in there. Yeah. All the wheels are, are engaged to prevent that from happening. Like they put up this, I was the first one to... Wait, so you're going to be like a Ron Paul, a Dennis Kucinich type of person, and Alan... Make, yeah. Uh, yeah, I will be a powerful voice for the people in Congress. And, and that's the one thing people got to know. You go to my website, I have the most detailed website probably in the entire nation. Details. You won't go away from my website, johnrussellforcongress.com. Yeah, that's, that's where I, thing. Your Paul Elliott guy doesn't even have a website. That's why he's, he's got a website, but he has, he has a couple. Of, all he is, uh, I mean, uh, I don't want to overcharacterize him, but he, he doesn't even have a... He has titles of, of issues, and there's nothing about the issues. It's just there for show. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I'm perfectly willing to engage this guy in debate, and certainly Mr. Snow. Mr. Snow purchased his website. I don't want to be, I'm just being honest. You go to Politicus, the bottom of his website, and you, and you go to Politicus, and uh, you click on that, and you'll see that his website is all the messages purchased. The whole thing is purchased. I mean, he's, he's basically, uh, you know, you, you just can't, you can't say with the problems we have that a 25-year-old guy, and I, I said this to him in face-to-face, -face, I said, how does working at Walgreens prepare you to be a congressman? Well, yeah, now that's John it's Michael. Now, now, you know what? I mean, anyone should be able to run, and, and, and that's, that's good, but he doesn't, now I was looking yeah, at his website. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Anyone can run. But, uh, you know, That's where true. he came from, uh, this uh, was not, in my opinion, entirely his but idea. But he doesn't mention the NDAA or anything that has to do with civil liberties whatsoever on there. And, and he, you know, he probably... He's got like five lines Obama, topic, and, and he puts out these emails all the time. And he's running away, you know, like uh, on, on like these uh, uh, patches things for the neighborhood. He, he puts employer, employ, employ, employment not applicable then he buries it you know buries it down in some uh, uh a whole bunch of text that he works at walgreens i mean uh, he has said it he's on he's on tape saying he works at walgreens and he has it on his facebook page and he has it somewhere on his on his website but the point is this is a this is the kind of of uh, checkers that is played by the major party they know that gus is weak Democrats don't want me in there any more than the Republicans. Plus, unless if you have someone who is like a Dennis Kucinich or a Ron Paul or someone who has a lot of integrity, like you know, integrity of steel, I would say it's not worth voting for a Republican or Democrat, anyways. Um, exactly. I mean, that's that's the problem. I mean, it's just going to encourage them. They have single-digit approval ratings. I mean, I mean, single-digit approval ratings. They were down to like nine percent at the beginning of the year. I mean, how low can they go? I mean, what's the media doesn't even cover that. I mean, because they have like a 17% approval rating. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the only way the media is going to cover things is if we get a wave of people, like a wave of third party, Green Party, Libertarian, and independent, no party affiliation people. I mean, if we get like 50... The stranglehold of these corporate-owned party apparatchiks. Maybe like you and some people around the state of Florida who are like independents, third parties, can have some kind of event. And, and, and I mean, because this is a nationwide thing, even if you're not in Florida, it, you're going to the U.S. Congress. So, I mean, that's why I can be just as much of a fan as like a Dennis. That's Kucinich what I've been Paul. saying, but I don't know where, you know, what I, I really don't know what to, I put this thing out on Medicare. Now, I uh, we put it up on a few Facebook pages and stuff. And it's like people should be all over this. I got Paul Ryan lying. Yeah, we have someone here who is, is, is going to like, um, d you know, defend and take your oath to the Constitution sincerely. And um, and because that's what that's what's on the medical table right now um, is our your health and your life and that of those who follow you yeah. on the line. And I'm I'm the perfect guy. I mean, what's they, gonna, they if we keep voting the lesser of two evils compared to like oh. our standard of living from Ronald Reagan or Jimmy Carter? 
or, or even before that till now. I mean, what's the prediction? I mean, if we keep I going... Just look at the graphs. The graphs are widely available. You, you look, the, earn, the earnings uh, for, you know, working people are essentially flat for like the last 40... We're going to lose more jobs just because we keep competing against 70 cents an hour or a day or whatever. How are you going to do? Live in a tent? I mean, it's, it's just... It's just ridiculous. And then, look, what's gonna, what's happening? And our civil liberties. I mean, it's turning more and more into like a, a, a Orwellian video or, camera everywhere. Police states. I, yeah, th this is really outrageous. Corporations like corporations are just getting more and more bailouts, just overtly in front of our faces every day on the news. I mean. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I'm for, I don't want to neglect this, is I'm for legalization of marijuana. Yeah. Why not? I mean, how much has it you know, I mean, costed us since Nixon? Exactly. I mean, it's so ridiculous. Have you ever heard of someone overdosing on marijuana? And Never. Do you think, um, now, to make a cop's life easier, do you think cops, should we pass a law where cops are, are not allowed to have quotas, maybe? Well, you know... Because I, I think that's really unfair to them. I mean... Oh, well, and here's the thing. There are, there are illicit drugs or, you know, especially prescription drugs that kill people like eight, nine a day nationally, every day. Yeah, like uh, prescription drugs. Oxycontin. Oxycontin. Oxycodone. Yeah. Uh, th these things kill people. Uh, fentanyl, uh, the, um, uh, you know, There's heroin, you, can, you know, hard, hard narcotics. But, you know, what, what the, what's holding this back is corporations going back to the 30s. The, the hemp, hemp is a great fiber, but the DuPonts and the melons uh, made sure that was legislated out of production uh, so that they could you get could nylon. You could genetically modify a better crop than hemp. In yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, ex that's exactly it. And uh, the 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 deal is we have got to uh, bring some rational rationality to what we're going to allocate our resources for. You know, if security is important, well, you know, chasing around after. Uh, you know, after a pot is just not a good use of resources. You know, well, it's it's way drug than a twelve pack. A twelve pack of bud is the worst. Is the worst. Right, right. That causes a lot more harm. I mean, but what about the hypocritical parts? I mean, if President Obama and George W. Bush and Bill Clinton all wouldn't have even allowed to have been presidents if they were treated the same way as some of our fellow citizens were, who only had possession of marijuana. Yeah, exactly. And the, the this is the this is to fill. So anyone can be president, it, right? It, Unless if you get caught. I'm against private prisons. There's no way oh, that yeah. should have a profit motive right. on my incarceration totally. or anyone else's, for that matter. Yeah, they try that, to pass laws like three strikes you're out, so they get more prisoners. Exactly. And, and you know what? The prisoners work. They're like Chinese labor too. I, I mean, because they a lot of these companies hire. Exactly, prisoners. you're exactly right. Uh, it's educate or incarcerate. We spend way more in prisons than we do in education, and it's they're like crying slavery. about it, uh, about the uh, about the uh, uh, the cost of education and these bad teachers for crying out loud. I don't know how many teachers. I I can't really count any teachers that I've known who are in in education. Uh, you know, to make sh you know to ensure that their their students are you know don't come out of there better than the way it came in. Well, I, I, and a lot of people. What, what, I think if there's one thing that's um, like I think um, you know we should bring education back to the local community. But if there's one thing that would be good to um, you, you know make sure that there's some standards is shouldn't that's exactly what I was going to say. Learn civics or like learn about civics and the Constitution. Exactly like civics, but they don't want you to know that stuff. To know history, uh, then you might not repeat it. You Your know what we got stuff. going on. Yeah. Oh, it was standards. You set the standards, uh, and and like when I I'm from you know Buffalo, New York, as I said, and my friend's a teacher, and by a certain point, every teacher's got to have a master's degree. Uh, I mean, they have to be competent in what they're doing, and the, the schools that need to be well funded. Um, now the other thing here is the well, Vic, it's done on property tax, don't you think? And that, now this is more of a state issue. I just think like you know they should distribute, they should collect the property taxes, perhaps, or I think maybe we should get rid of it and have sales tax. But either way, they should distribute the money based on population, right? It's not that's why some not on you know all this look, you know the the kids that live in the affluent neighborhoods, they already have advantages. We need to we need to make sure yeah. uh, that you know you don't want people to grow up to be criminals. Well, you need to make sure that they have the the proper preparation 
that they can be productive, become productive members of society. And plus, as kids, they need stuff to inspire to. Like, like when they were young, people wanted to go to space. And, you know, we're going to go to the. Oh moon. yeah, we lost that one because we spent four. Tr look, yeah. four trillion dollars over there in the Middle East. What could just a small portion of that done to the? the hell, one month in in Iraq. Uh, what is the budget of NASA? Yeah, I mean, I mean, and and, and, and isn't that going to like create more scientists, like a, more of a demand for returns, engineers? NASA returned eight dollars in profit for every dollar invested. Think Teflon pans. Right. Think your your. Comp that, that's another thing. Like one of those standards. Like, does it pay for itself? Um, Basic yeah. science. Now, let me make one last uh, point on this education issue. These private for-profit colleges are a scam. They're taking uh, government money. My wife has, uh, you know, done some teaching at, at these places, and uh, they they often provide degrees or or uh, preparation for jobs that do not exist. I mean, you know, eighty thousand dollars to become a website developer or something. I mean, on the private on the public dole. Uh, you know, it's public government, federally government guaranteed uh, loans. Uh, I mean, there there has to be some regulation and oversight on these these colleges, so unwitting students aren't taken advantage of, and then and hence the the taxpayer as well down the road. Yeah, so, and, and education might need to be rethought in a lot of different ways. I mean, they, they you. I mean, I'm sure you've seen some news articles. They have some experimental schools like out in Oregon where you know kids play in the outdoors and stuff and then they they, they kind of set their own curriculum I mean there's so many things that elemental we, psychology yeah I mean there's so many things that we can do it's the main thing is getting kids wanting to do it and by having an atmosphere around them that's um, inspiring and looking for positive things in the future exactly uh, you know I mean there 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 are so many issues you want to put people to work we are so far behind on energy behind germ Germany, Shit. right? I mean, we're the Sunshine State. I mean, exactly. I mean, I've, solar. I've, I mean, I mean, we could have all, all the mean, money we spent for the bailouts. We could have just bought solar for every house in this. State. Exactly. And that would have paid for itself as well. That's another thing that would have paid for itself. It, it would reduce Utility demand companies. for oil. So reducing demand for oil would actually lower those prices as well. And that's not what, what the powers that be want to occur. You know, the utility companies, they make money by selling power. They're not in, in the business of having you Imagine generate power on your roof. Imagine every single household having a thousand extra dollars every single year because that's how much that would do for the economy. Oh my God. I mean, they, they would have no more. These solar panels are, are built to, to withstand hail. They're 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 built to last like 30 years. Exactly, and and you, you know. And how I many mean, jobs would that create? Um, like uh, if we bought GM, which I, I'm against, but if we had bought it, why not use that to make all these solar panels? Maybe. Yeah. Well, look, there's there's all kinds of. Or just pay private companies. You we know? have to, we have to use tax policy. And the panels should have to be made in the U.S., right? Exactly. It, we use tax policy to. Uh, encourage not fund one single company what you do you do it with credits to the to the to increase demand but it might not be bad uh, to help some you know small businesses well you know, exactly I mean there's, there's a variety of ways to do it but the bottom line is we got to we got to make this this is the policy direction we got to go in the direction of clean Nuclear is not clean. It's not cheap. Oh no, no! Nu nuclear can't even pay for itself. Uh, no, nuclear is. And they always tend to build it like right next to some like earthquake, um, like fault line, um, right next to like. Water. Oh, we're right next to you know if we have a bad hurricane. It's, uh, Crystal River has 1,328 uh, fuel rod assemblies, each composed of 76 fuel rods. There's a hot core over there in the pool. Um, you know, this is, it's a second most... Yeah, and you can't even store the waste for like a million years it takes. That's what we're talking about, and, and so they continue to do this. Why? Because, because we politicians can. make the policy. So we need people to go up there and, and wrench the policy discussion in the proper direction away from these bought and paid for people that uh, who um, are yeah, just basically agents corporate, for the corporation. Corporate welfare. I mean, people. how can people aren't as fed up about corporate right, welfare about, as they are about, like... About, an, uh, about, a, about the, uh, you know, uh, uh, an unwed mother getting welfare. Right. That's peanuts, peanuts.
peanuts, peanuts, peanuts it is. compared to the corporate welfare. Oh, we're, co we're comparing um, like tens of billions compared to trillions. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, it's, it's peanuts, you know, on a budgetary perspective. And uh, but they use this to manipulate people because people like to like to know that there's somebody worse off than them. That I mean, they... maybe people wouldn't need as much of that if there weren't all this corporate welfare. I mean, it, the, the two might go hand in hand. I mean, you, you know, um, if you want to level the playing field, if you're building, if you're putting people to work in these uh, in these jobs that and, and these jobs are are jobs that are good jobs good that jobs are needed calling maintaining they're, they're not jobs where they're building like um missiles to destroy like other you know places exactly and uh, there, there's there's I mean, uh, that's a net loss right there we pay them and then we just destroy stuff that we have to build again you know to like halliburton for you know total rip off rates yeah this is all stuff that i have been for i mean my views uh have been very so I, I just ask people to go to my website. I certainly ask people to uh, contribute a little bit if, if they could. I mean, uh, we yeah, yeah, your website, by the way, is um, John. Just type into Google John Russell and you'll find it. But it's John, J-O-H-N, Russell, R-U-S-S-E-L-L, 4, F-O-R, Congress, dot com. And um, there you are. And, and there's about issues. Um, YouTube, uh, news, you, on Facebook, it's... Uh, 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 John Russell, um, uh, John Russell, 2000. Uh, uh, I'm voting for John Russell in 2012. That's a, a Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook uh, page there. Um, at John Russell, uh, John Russell. I mean, this is exciting. We could have someone like in, in, in that's founding father type material here, um, and. Um, just because your characters and your principles, um, you, you know, and I'm sure you would work with a lot of people. I mean, that tells a lot about yourself, um, your integrity and what you hold important and that you're willing to do this. I mean, people are having a 9% approval rating. It means that they disapprove of the current Congress. I mean, if they actually want to do something, vote. I mean, that's something that we can do. Um, I mean, support someone. Get excited about not you as a person per se, but because you like champion these ideas. Stuff that Something you want that change, you have a long time. somebody that's gonna willing to upset the apple cart a little bit, and uh, I believe that I have the the background, uh, the the integrity. I mean, I've you know they've allowed me to take care of people. To you know, I've saved more than a few lives in in my career, professionally speaking, literally, and. I, I understand well, that you're going to free people. I mean, I mean, um, you know, uh, decriminalizing medical marijuana, not having, you know, unjust rational, powers. rational policy that that is, uh, you know, I have my MBA in health systems management. I understand economics. And, you know, I, I think I have a mature outlook on, you know, looking at the co weighing the costs and the benefits of certain policies and then being articulate enough to defend them and go on the offensive. I, I just, uh, we need people who aren't going to sell out, and I think that's and the bottom line. And so, yeah. when are those debates going to be, um, you know, and... and I have know. no idea what the, the you know, what the, uh, the uh, you know, whether we'll have any, I, I when really... When we'll have I'm, a PBS debate? Uh, what's that? A PBS debate, maybe, um, you know, public broadcast system. Well, you know what, they're pretty well, I had a little situation with WEDU back in 2008, and, uh, they first invited everybody to debates, then the then virtually all of the incumbents said, "Oh, I'm too busy. I can't do this. I can't do." That. I said, "I'm willing to go anytime." Well, if you want to see polls, I mean, look at the Gallup poll of a nine percent approval rating, and um, and if if you want to see polls, I, I mean, um, you 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 did what you have to had to do to get on the ballot, and was that? I mean, do you think those are fair um, amounts of signatures that you had to gather or, or, or pay or whatever? I, think, I mean, I've had to gather twice as much before, you know, and other times when I've done this, and and um, I, I think it was reasonable. Again, uh, you know... I mean, if you're well, on the ballot, I mean, I, I want to hear your voice. I mean, that's... Well, but the powers that be don't want voices like mine being heard. That's why they put up Jonathan Michael Snow. That's why... Uh, uh, and then when, when they say they don't want your voice being heard, I, I, I feel like they don't want my voice being heard either. They don't, because what we're doing, well, and I didn't even get into the fact that the Division of Elections 
Uh, we caught them, uh, I won't go on to all the details, but we've got hard copy evidence that the D Florida Division of Elections, uh, someone up there padded petition card totals for one Kevin Hall, who was an NPA that was trying to get on with petition cards, and uh, we uh, caught the shenanigans. I can't get anybody to write about it. I got hard copy evidence. Well, what, 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 your district 12, like what's the cities and towns in that district? Um, uh, Wesley Chapel, uh, I think West Chase, uh, Tarpon Springs, uh, uh, Palm Harbor, okay. um, you know, Newport Ritchie, Port Ritchie. Um, so, I mean, you're in the Tampa, city, Tampa Hills, All Tampa of Pasco area. County. Every bit of Pasco County is in this district. We have Northwest Hillsboro like uh, your Carrollwood, West Chase's areas, and northern Pinellas County, Tarpon Springs, Palm Harbor. So, I mean, you're running against a typical Republican, Bill Arrakis, who voted for the NDAA. Um, and, um, he voted for the Ryan plan twice. I so mean, the NDAA, he voted so Americans could be indefinitely detained without uh, a trial, without a jury, indefinitely detained. Please. He voted so that, um, you know, the military can, uh, y you know, do uh, d criminal investigations. Exactly. Uh, I mean, he needs to, g I mean, that should be, if there ever was a line in the sand, everyone, no matter what party they were, independent, Democrat, Republican, anyone who voted for that, that person ba basically broke their oath to the Constitution. Um, they, they, they. they they, they need to go, I mean, in, in the most emphatic manner you could say. And then, you know, you have another Democrat who's, you know, just basically a Demlican. And, um, uh, and well, actually, the Democrat is just a name on the ballot to get the, the unwitting D's to just pull yeah, the exactly. lever on the D. Right. <clears throat> That's why he's there. No one in the right mind, I think, unless you're just an emphatic Democrat, so, you're, you're going right. to pull the lever for a guy that... You know, has is, you know, I'm going to be real should, honest. We shouldn't allow D's oh, jobs and I's on the ballot. It should be just a name. You should be informed enough to know what party they're in. You know? Exactly, and and, uh, and but this is the this is why they did it. I know where it came from. I have a balanced, I have a balanced um, approach to the Middle East. Hold everyone accountable is my policy, and that's not the policy that the Democrats uh, or really the Republicans want to hear. And uh, I, I think Israel needs to be held accountable for things that they do that are, are uh, not right. And uh, as well, uh, you know, we got to hold Palestinians accountable and anybody else that are doing, you know, performing acts. And would you agree that, like, what Bill Clinton was going to do, like, that probably would have been, the, you know, just, it, that's like the closest um, thing that we've ever had. Why not just support uh, Yeah, that? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sick of hearing about it. Uh, yeah, I am too. I mean, yeah. It's 15 years old, and I'm, I've been listening to this stuff for, you know, whatever, 35 years or whatnot, and, and it's just, uh, yeah. it, it just doesn't, it's... I mean, don't you think maybe we should, like, have a NASA trip and have one Palestinian and one Israeli both up there at the same time and um, and maybe have it, like, on television where they're shaking hands or something? Wouldn't be a bad, you know, what, whatever. I mean, a lot of this is emotion, but really the, the thing is we need to be fair. You know, there needs to be some fairness exerted uh, from the standpoint, you know, everybody stand down. And then they need to have an objective discussion, not using like religion as a lever to take land, which is a, a lot of this, one way or the other. You, you can point that at both sides, you know, biblical this and that. You know, I mean, the bottom line is we need to solve this problem in the in the 21st century and move on so that everyone can be productive and have uh, you know good you know good lives and move things forward. You know, you talk about space. Look at Look at how much uh, money and resources and, and blood and treasure have been wasted on all these crazy wars we have all, uh, all the time, and a lot of it fighting over energy and, uh, and re or religious politics, when we could have been using that to advance the cause of the human race. Oh, totally, totally. I mean, people need that exploration. Like back a couple hundred years ago, they still had a new world and, 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 and new places to discover, and we haven't explored a lot of the Earth, actually. Exactly. I mean, and you know, I, I love the Mars rover thing, but when I was a kid, 1987, we were supposed to have a man on Mars. Totally, yeah. yeah. Dad worked in the space program. I mean, he used to, you know, the movie The Right Stuff, when I was a 
you know, a kid in elementary school, I went outside and saw those launches. I stood on A1A and watched as a, like a six-year-old or whatever and watched John Glenn ride by on A1A. You know, and maybe force these defense. I mean, here be the 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 the, the, the least worst thing. It would be, um, uh, or, or yeah, I guess um, have these military contractors just have them start if they're so powerful. Have them just start working on uh, like outer space. And exactly, stuff. and here we're and like you go back to this uh, uh, the security state. With drones, I mean, I um, yeah, uh, my uh, my uh, father-in-law had a, and he's a very qualified witness, had a drone fly over a treetop level about the size of a Piper Cub in his backyard. And, and you know what? The next step's going to be. I, I mean, it's going to be put, putting weapons on them. I mean, um, it, it, they might not have Stinger missiles or whatever, but they'll have some kind of like at least. It's about control. Uh, control the population, and and that's why we need to get. Pe this is the window. If I mean, we have a window left of getting people like me who will stand up in office. Yeah, we need at least fifty people that are not Democrats and independents that that is going to cause media stir I mean imagine what the headlines would be if we actually will be our own media and uh, we cover the media not covering the stories and that's some of the and stuff two that years I've from, I mean that's a great already. thing about Congress the way the founding fathers did design it at least they designed the house uh, correctly um, that every two years you can and so if we get 50 people to, in 2012, we might get 100s in 2014, you know, and you could be part of that first wave. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm trying to do. That's been my concept as I've gone along trying to do this. I tried to work with the Democrats. Then I have Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who's now the head of the Democratic National Committee. Who I also think voted for the NDA. She was endorsing the Republican uh, Congresswoman, Ginny Brown Waite, not once but twice in the St. Pete Times. So, I mean, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, I know, I know the politics, I know the media, and uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. This to should be your time. I mean, it couldn't, you couldn't ask for a better time, uh, John. You couldn't ask for a better time than um, November the 6th, 2012. I mean, never in, in the past times that you've ran um, has the Congress had such a low approval rating. I mean, the reason why, I mean, the news media acts shocked when all of a sudden, you know, the Congress tips from Republican to Democrat, they're like, the people don't know what they want. The people do know what they want. They, they, they just can't get it. They don't get the choice. They're not afforded the choice. I they're here just to sick give them of the choice. everyone. I mean, people. it doesn't take long before people are getting sick of these politicians. I mean, you know, first they're sick of Bush, now they're sick of Obama and, 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 and Pelosi. Well, because they're all playing to the same benefactors. That's the deal. That's why, it, that's why it's... Why nothing moves forward? Obama dilly-dallied for two years when he supposedly had the, uh, the dilly-dallying was purposeful because uh, he, he could not use the so-called power of having the Senate and Congress in his corner, so he went for bipartisanship, which is just, you know... No, he, he didn't even try ridiculous. to get the public option either. Like, it, that was one of his campaign promises. That was one of the times... Exactly, and how many... ...outwitted Hillary Clinton. I remember in the debates, he said, but the thing, the difference between me and you, Hillary, is that I'm never going to, you know, put a public option in there, you know? Oh, and, you know, I, I was an Edwards guy, and I've met some of these people, and, and uh, you know, the, when Edwards stood up in a debate, and, uh, you know, notwithstanding all the stuff that followed, he was... That woman that uh, went after him, I believe, uh, was, uh, well, not I believe, uh, it is factually true that she was a, a bar fly of some renown in the 1980s and uh, had a book actually written about her exploits. And so she went after that guy and she got him, you know, and, uh, and he w stood up in, in a debate, uh, you know, early on when he was actually in the debates. And... He said, you mu you got to be in fantasy land if you think you're going to negotiate with these people, speaking of the health insurance companies, when they were talking about health care. And he goes, you have to defeat them, and I know how to defeat them. Uh, yeah. On. Well, he told that me is a direct that quote that he's done, and, you know, he fell for the oldest trick in the book, yeah. you know, and uh, that's. Oh, he totally gave the health insurance companies the biggest giveaway ever. Um, I mean, he, he, he surpassed Bush in that. I mean, he almost is like the, like a third Bush administration term. I mean, to be quite honest, I mean, I mean he... More, he's more solid Bush than Bush was. I mean, he expanded the war, gave us corporate insurance, 
Yeah, uh, but he does it with the soft touch. He, he's rhetorically the most accomplished president I can ever think of. I will say, and this. the people I mean, fall for it. It's it's now. I think it's great that the American population um, voted for a president not based on the color of their skin, but on the, their character or what they thought was. And that doesn't mean anything about Obama. Obama. That means about us. We the people that we're doing this now. It's time for us to truly um, vote on people uh, based on their character. I mean, because we've seen four years of him, and um, it has nothing to do with um, a race or anything. It, it's, it's, it doesn't take away that um, we, we were able to elect somebody, but it's not about him. It's about the issues. Exactly. It's a, it is about the issues. The issues, the, it's the policies that, that affect your life. And so you have to elect politicians whose policies you have some degree of confidence in that so will... actually had some hope. He said he was a constitutional scholar. He said he wasn't going to sign signing statements, which he did. He said he wasn't going to fill his administration with the lobbyists, and he did. I mean, it's... The first day, as soon as he was done with the inauguration, when I saw Leon Panetta get out of the car, I mean, you got to be kidding me. Game over. Game yeah, set. Yeah, and that guy Daly, who is his chief Daly, of staff. the Chicago you know, guy, I mean, honest to God, right out of the blocks. So we can complain about Obama. You can complain about Bush. Uh, you can compl really you have to complain about Clinton. Well, we can make glass a difference. People got the, rid of glass. Yeah, the, the the local level, like you. This is where we can actually make a. a we can make a difference. You're absolutely right. That's why I'm now, trying to do this. Um, like I mean, you know, you could probably go to. What are all the typical places to go to? Like American legions and places like that. Well, like, you you know, the, this is the thing. A lot of these uh, places, the people. The people abide by uh, authority figures. So whatever the authority figure, like a lot of these older people are, are very much influenced by the newspapers and stuff. I think more than ever, the Internet is going to play a much larger role this election. But, um, you I know, so. it, it's, it's like you're doing here. And if we can get these, you know, I don't know who's going to sit here yeah, and you listen. You said you were endorsed by the, someone from the Green Party. Is that right? What's that? You were endorsed by someone from the Green Party. What I want, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, what I was, uh, um, David Cobb, who was the Green Party 2004 Green Party presidential nominee, who with uh, Michael Bednarik, the, right, libertarian the Libertarian presidential yeah. nominee, contested the count in Ohio because of all the shenanigans that went on there. I mean, you know, in the aftermath, it was found that the votes were being run through a computer in somebody's basement in another state. Uh, the guy that rigged it up, O'Donnell was his name, well, I believe. Know, it doesn't look like there's any Libertarian or Green Party person running against you. No, there's uh, there's no Libertarian. No, there's the Mr. Elliott, the other NPA or independent, whatever he is, um, like I said, he is just, uh, he's just like, get rid of the debt, you know, his, 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 his talking point. Yeah, he doesn't have a website, um, and um, yeah, he's the one that does I, I couldn't find one at least, but I was thinking because there's this other person who's in uh, Vermont who's endorsed by both the Green Party and the Libertarian Party. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm, uh, I would, uh, I would seek the, those endorsements. Uh, yeah, it's like a called a fusion candidates. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I wonder, I wonder how. I need to talk to the Green Party people and see if I can uh, talk to them about it. And maybe uh, I would say that Libertarian Party too. Um, because gotta talk to you know Alex Snicker is a guy I'm working with who's a, a big Libertarian here and um, uh, I don't Absolutely. know if you have any. I mean, you're you're for auditing the Fed. You're for, um, uh, you know, ending these wars. Um, I, I mean, you're against the NDAA. I, I mean, you're for the legalization of marijuana and industrial hemp, uh, which has no THC in it, by the way. Um, and uh, and it's, yet it's illegal, and we have to import um, hemp, which we do. We can legally import it and make clothes and, and, and stuff out of it, but instead of growing it ourselves, but that's right. ridiculous. Um, and, and, then, and, and then you're also against, like, crony capitalism and stuff like that and just having integrity. I, I see the Libertarian Party, um, Independence, I, I see a fusion candidate here. And, um, and I see, you know, um, I, you know, maybe called, you know, everyone who's listening, I mean, call up like a, 
you know, there's a local radio station here called WMNF. I would encourage people to call them up and say, you know what, you should have John Russell on there sometime as an interviewee because you're right there in that. Uh, oh, that's that is the kind of thing that I need. Yeah, the I'm kind of thing. Gonna send an email and, and give three, them a call. Three nine nine six six three is WMNF. They have a call in yeah, show eight, every single eight, weekday one, afternoon three, at yeah. five thirty p.m. Let me give that number. Yeah, it's eight one three two three nine nine six six three. They have a call in show each. Exactly, yeah. and, and they should demand that the, the and not at the end of the campaign when people have already started voting. Yeah. They, this needs to be done now. I am perfectly happy to go on there with Mr. Snow if they want to do that too. Yeah, if they're not giving you, if they're not letting you in the debates, that I, I take it as they're not letting me in the debates. I mean, this should be personal, people. Oh, exactly. And we need to, uh, we need to when we, when we get this thing uh, going here, um, just a little bit down the line, maybe in about three weeks, and and things start to gel. We got all the questionnaires in, all this kind of stuff. Um, then we got to start. I need people to be pumping these outlets, pumping, you know, pumping the, you know, we're going to have debates. We, you know, we, the people in this atmosphere with 9% approval ratings and Gus Bilirakis is not going to debate uh, his opponents. You know, that is outrageous. That, that's completely outrageous. That sounds yeah, outrageous. like a boss hog type of town or something. And I'm sure well, Palm Harbor is not a boss hog type town. Yeah, and, and uh, well, you know, the Republican Party, and there is, the point of fact is, there is, why do we have a 25-year-old guy that works at Walgreens? Because there is no credible Democratic Party presence in this region. Yeah, they, they want to guarantee uh, yeah, running for against the uh, Republicans and, and, and more legislation, like more, like going to war with Iran preemptively and, 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 and you know, more stuff like the NDAA, more corporate corporate cronyism i mean you know the, the, the oh, I, mean, I mean just to further document that uh there's one guy running for prisons and, and, and stuff commission like seat yeah. here who is a, a guy he was a nice guy but they put him up when they need a candidate for something he's run for a variety of things um and then up uh, running against mr nugent in i think it's called 11 now oh, this is up in hernando county uh, is a Democrat, Dave Warder, who's a disabled uh, truck driver, uh, and uh, he's a nice guy. And he's, but uh, you know, it, it's the credibility gap is huge because there is no, there is no credible Democratic Party presence. Yeah, you're no party affiliation because um, I would say that you know you're American first, right? So exactly. I mean, I, I I'm for all the people. I don't care what somebody's party is. Listen to my positions. And you got a pretty good idea that that sounds pretty good for me. I mean, look, people are struggling, struggling to keep their homes. Uh, everybody, no matter what income level they're at, they're somewhere below where they used to be, so they're not too happy. And when you're struggling to pay... Yeah, or their neighbors are, I mean, you know... Exactly. Uh, health insurance is extremely costly look at how much and they're less free they're less free now than they were a variety um, of ways less free and you can't just blame obama you gotta blame it's the cabal oh it's it's bush i mean obama is bush part three and, and romney is just gonna be part four i mean we've never had like um i saw this interview they're talking about who they thought was a worst president i would have to say i mean maybe woodrow wilson maybe but um, maybe um, because he started World War One and and and, and you know you got Federal Uber, I mean, Reserve, so but, a... um, but but maybe George W. Bush and maybe Obama, I mean combined, and I think Romney would be like you know up there yeah, too that's... if he got elected. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's it's really it's really. I mean, our selections have been getting worse. Exactly, this is and happens. and is Romney a good selection? I mean, the guy, if he wasn't born. You know, if he, if he wasn't genetically endowed by being born to a, a famous, successful father, um, right, who was a governor he'd be where he is. Michigan, I think. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Really you, you have to ask that question, and uh, I don't think so. I mean, he doesn't ac 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 acquit himself very well on the campaign. Well, that's like when Dick um, uh, Cheney, like, um, you know, said in his debate a long time ago against Lieberman that, um, you know, all his success was because he was in a private sector. Well, people didn't mention he worked for Halliburton, who gave him a job after he left the defense, um, being a defense. Uh, exactly, you know. and that's a joke, and that's that. That's that. I mean, he was only successful because he gave himself a lot of 
corporate contracts. I mean, right. And the same thing with the Bush family. Look at Neil Bush and this education software. They they come up with something, they cook something up, and they sell it to the government. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's, if your customer, you know, gives you guaranteed, you, you know, no bid contracts, I exactly. guess it's exactly. And, and they got the, and they got their their brother in there, who's the one giving, you know, lining up the contracts for them. It, it's the absolute worst kind of graft and corruption. And uh, and it's like people. Yeah, Paul O'Neill, who is a Treasury Secretary, um, said in a 60 Minutes interview and his book. I mean, he was a Bush administration. Got his book. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 D Department of Treasury. He was a Treasury Secretary. He said they were divvying up Iraq even before, um, you, you know, the Iraq War, like even before 9/11. I mean, he said they were divvying up between oil companies. Right. And the funny thing is. Uh, a lot of that went down the tubes, and you got Chinese oil companies because once they got it going, these, these people were making their own decisions. And uh, I, I saw this on uh, on CNN. Oh, yeah. and, and our troops are, you, you know, the, the you know they're protecting all the opium in Afghanistan now. I mean, it's just crazy. They protected the oil ministry instead of the antiquities at the cradle of civilization. I mean, you got to say, what are your priorities? Yeah, this is a complete time of like, you, you know, we got to do, I mean, this is like, I mean, this is like times where, you know, we need someone like, you know, founding father type material, people willing to make that kind of stand, you, you know, in Congress. I mean, I don't know what could be more exciting than, than, than the times that we live in, and hopefully we can take control of our government again. I, I mean, this is... Um, you, you know, all, all, all the best to you, John. And um, I mean, I guess it's up to the people. I, I mean, you. you the people, but you choice. know what? I mean, if anything, this interview is going to be looked at 20 years from now, and, and people will say, you know what? I mean, hopefully, this would be the start of when we took our government back, or they can look back sadly and say, you know what? There were choices people that people made. had, and they just, you know, were too lazy and, and spending too much time on the Super Bowl or whatever. That's it, the distraction. Listen, Tom, nice talking to you. I'm sure we'll talk again as this goes along. Absolutely. Um, um, you know there's that um, Paul Fest tomorrow at um, the, the... Yeah, the, and I, 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 when does that start? Because I yeah, really think... it starts at noon. I mean, just walking around with the John Russell for Congress District 12 shirts. Um, I mean, that's, you know, just plant those seeds. You know, I might bring I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I'm going to go down there, and uh, you have my cell phone if you're down yeah. there. Uh, uh, give me a give me a call cool. tomorrow on the cell phone, and uh, I, I'm planning on going down there and seeing who I might be able to run into. You never know who you, you go someplace, you never know who you might run into. So that's a uh, at, at the USF Sun Dome. Is that where it is? Um, at that Sunday, Sunday uh, you want to get there like about 10:45 a.m. at the Sunday. It's a free event. That's when Ron Paul's actually going to speak. But Saturday tomorrow. Um, that's actually at the fairgrounds, all right? Um, and, and, um, fairgrounds, yeah, that's, okay, that's great. That's at the fairgrounds. That's going to be $35 to enter at the door, but you're going to have, like, tons of speakers there. Um, I mean, you'll have Adam Kokesh, uh, Peter Schiff, um, Sheriff Mack. Um, you'll have uh, Thomas Woods. I mean, there's just going to be a lot of people. Um, they expect about 15,000 people, um, and um, so... Um, yeah, I mean, independence um, running against someone who voted for the NDAA in District 12. Um, enough said. I, I mean, you, you know, or against the status quo. There's no Libertarian Green Party people running against you. Um, I mean, if, if people have a choice, here's a way where people can definitely, with just their votes, um, you, you know, make a big investment for the, you, you know, um, what's right. Well, listen. Uh Possibly, uh, give me give me a call tomorrow. I have I have work that I have to get done this weekend, which kind of. But it's anywhere between noon to midnight tomorrow. So noon to midnight. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe maybe I'll make it down later in the day. Am I? Yeah. Uh, and, and and then the, the one on Sunday it starts at like 10:45, and I'll probably end a little earlier. But yeah, so two different types of things, but all part of the same thing. And uh, so I hope to see you there, John. That would be great. All right, Tom. Thank you so much, and I appreciate the opportunity to be on your. Uh, your uh, program. Well, thank you for your time and, and, and putting yourself out here to, um, you, you know, that people can uh, put ten, hopefully have a voice. Yeah, that's what we're. That's what I think we're, we're we're both and everyone else involved is trying to do this. Do that. So. November six, two thousand twelve. Uh, well, um, John, uh, keep in touch and, and have a, a great weekend. Sir. You too, my friend. Thank Thanks. you so much, Tom. Take thank care. You. Thank you. Bye bye.